Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a value-packed laptop I picked up the other day from Acer. This is in their Aspire 5 series. It's a 15-inch laptop, but this one happens to be powered by a Ryzen processor, and it delivers exceptional graphics performance for its $315 price point. At least that's what it's selling for at the time I'm recording this review. And I can't believe how much you're getting for the price. So we're going to step through this thing and see all the things it can do here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what we can do with this value-packed laptop. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This has an AMD Ryzen 3 3200U processor. It has a 128 gigabyte solid state drive. It's an NVMe drive that you can swap out and upgrade if you want. In addition to that, there's room for a two and a half inch SATA drive inside as well. So you can run two hard drives inside the computer. Now it only though has four gigabytes of RAM and the only knock I have against it is how they have configured the RAM. By default, it comes with only one stick of RAM, which as you'll see in a few minutes, diminishes its performance potential. So my recommendation to you is to buy a second stick of RAM or just get a new set of RAM to put in. Uh, we brought ours up to eight gigabytes for this review, two sticks of four. And when you have the RAM in dual channel configuration, it runs a lot faster, especially when you're playing games and doing other graphically intensive things. So to really unlock the performance here, you're gonna have to do a little bit of work on it, but it's not hard to get inside. You just unscrew the screws on the bottom here and pop the bottom lid off, and you can very easily get at all of those components. We took it apart a little bit earlier on the Extras channel, so you can check out that video to see what that's all about. Again, not hard, but you have to do it really to get the potential that you're going to see here in this review. Now, when you get the computer, it's going to be running Windows 10 in S mode. And this means that you can only run applications that you get from the Windows 10 App Store. But there is a process in which you can disable S mode and install any software you want. And I strongly suggest doing that to get the most out of the laptop. The display is nice too, a 15 inch 1080p IPS display. It's got great viewing angles on it, nice and sharp. The color is good. My only complaint with the display is that it is very dim. I was expecting something to be a little bit brighter than what we got here, but it's good enough, I think, again, for the price point and the image quality is exceptional, just it won't do as well in a bright environment. Uh, so very good value here just on the overall components. It weighs 3.97 pounds or 1.8 kilograms. So not that heavy uh, compared to other laptops. So good there. Uh, the keyboard isn't bad on it. It's a typical Acer keyboard. The keys are slightly smaller than what you might see on other 15 inch laptops, but they did make room for a number pad on here. And it's backlit also. I didn't think it was until I started playing around with it. And sure enough, it lights up in the dark. So you have some backlighting there. Trackpad isn't bad, it feels a little squishy, but it's good enough, again, for the price point. I also like that the display can go flat here, so if you have a kid that gets a little overzealous with the uh, display, you won't damage it if you go back too far with it, so that was nice. It is not a touchscreen, though, but it is a nice matte finish display. Uh, the build quality isn't bad, it's mostly plastic, but the uh, lid here at the top is metal, so you'll have a nice protection for the screen, uh, but everything else is plastic. Uh, not all that large, again, not that heavy either. Uh, you have a port here for power. You have gigabit ethernet built into the side here, so you can plug it into your network. Full-size HDMI output is right here. Now there's only one, though, USB 3 port on this. You've got the USB 3 port here, a USB 2.0 port there, headphone microphone jack here. On the other side, you then have a USB 2 port and a Kensington lock. So the ports are a little lacking, no USB-C, uh, but again, given what else we're getting here, I'm not knocking it too hard for the lack of modern connectivity. I do think you're getting a lot more in exchange. Now, audio quality out of the speakers isn't bad. It's got two downward firing stereo speakers here on the front. Uh, they are loud, good stereo separation, but depending on the surface you're resting the laptop on, they'll sound a little different. Uh, so I found them to be a bit tinny on this wooden desk here. Uh, some other surfaces made them sound a little bit better, but you're going to get the best sound quality by plugging in a pair of headphones into the headphone jack or connecting up some Bluetooth headphones to it. 
Battery life is about six to six and a half hours in our testing. Not spectacular, but it's on par with other AMD laptops we have looked at in the past. Oftentimes with budget laptops, you don't get good battery life, so that is certainly the case here, but it's enough to get through a portion of the workday. If you are gaming or doing other graphically intensive stuff on it, uh, that will eat into the battery life further than what we found with the testing, but generally for doing some basic work stuff, expect about six to six and a half hours. So let's take a look now at performance. You're watching our 1080p 60 video test running here from YouTube. It seems to be working just fine there. No drop frames or anything that I'm concerned about in looking at that, so that was good. It does have an 802.11 AC Wi-Fi adapter built in in addition to the ethernet. And you can also see how fast web pages load up and render on the machine here. For the price point, it's performing really nicely. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 109 on version 1.0 of that test and 69.4 on version 2.0 of that test. It's an interesting score because last year we looked at the Huawei MateBook D that had a Ryzen 5 from last year, and you can see a nice improvement in its performance. And this test is often very much CPU dependent, so that was good to see. Uh, you can also see it compared against the Samsung Notebook Flash, which is an Intel-based device that comes in at around the same price point, and you can see it's doing better than that one. Uh, but you can also see an i5 or something will do much better in the end on overall web browsing. But again, for the price point, this really stands out quite nicely. So let's move on now to gaming. And we're going to start off with a benchmark first because I want you to see the differences between a single stick of RAM in this computer and two. So we've got the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test up here. And you can see with one stick of RAM, we got a score of 5,974. And you can see with two sticks, we got 7,389. And the frames per second on both graphics tests are significantly faster with two sticks versus one. And that's the difference that dual channel memory makes on this computer. Out of the box, it's not going to be living up to its potential. So if you do plan on trying to get some games to run on this, install two sticks because otherwise you're going to be holding back what you really can get out of this thing. So let's take a look now at games running with two sticks of RAM installed in the computer. You're seeing Fortnite running here. Uh, we got between 30 and 50 frames per second with low settings at 720p. That's where we recommend you run Fortnite at with this one. So not bad. Better than other $300 PCs. Uh, we booted up Half-Life 2, which is an older game, of course, but something that we always run on these low-end devices. At 1080p, we were getting between 120 and 200 frames per second, which was really nice to see. So that was a good experience. Uh, GTA 5 surprised us too because we were able to get a pretty playable game going at 1080p at the lowest settings. Uh, we were getting about 25 to 40 frames per second. If you dialed things down to 720p, you could probably get close to 60 if you adjusted things appropriately. Uh, so very good performance there at a GTA 5 on a low-end computer. Uh, we booted up the Dolphin emulator, and there we were getting full speed on Wave Race without any issues whatsoever. It looked great and played great, again, with our dual channel memory installed. Uh, incidentally, I did try running it with one stick of RAM, and it did pretty well there, too. That was the one thing where I didn't see that much variation between one versus two sticks of RAM. Uh, but we were running everything pretty much at the default settings. So if you were trying to get higher resolutions, I think you're going to do better again with two sticks versus one. And the last thing I wanted to show you was Rocket League. Uh, Rocket League did really well on this. So at high settings, 1080p, we were getting between 35 and 50 frames per second. And at the lowest settings, we were north of 90 frames per second at 1080p. And we also ran Rocket League with the same map at the lowest settings, 1080p, with one stick of RAM. And we were seeing about 30 frames per second less with that configuration. So you can really see how having that extra RAM in involved here really will make a difference, especially when you're pushing the machine graphically. And these AMD chips for the low end just do so much better than, than the Intel chips. And it's really fun to be able to play some current games, mostly, uh, on a laptop at this price. So let's jump back now to that 3D Mark CloudGate test and see how this computer compares against some other ones we've looked at. Uh, so the Acer Aspire 5 that we're currently looking at is lit up in yellow there with that score of 7,389. Uh, you can see the Lenovo ThinkBook 13S below it that we looked at a few weeks ago. Uh, that, of course, costs more and has an i5 processor from Intel inside. And you can see that chip does better on CPU tests, but not better on the graphics tests. 
Uh, and you can also see what a similar Acer Aspire 5 from last year with an MX150 will do uh, with its discrete GPU. So we kind of fall in between those two options there. And then last year, we also looked at the Huawei MateBook D with the prior generation Ryzen 5 chip. And you can see that one uh, is still besting this one. And I'd really be eager to see how the new generation of the Ryzen 5s do on these low-cost laptops. So maybe we'll try to get one of those in. And if you happen to know of any Ryzen 5 laptops we should look at, let me know down in the comments below and we'll see if we can get one in. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a failing grade of 92.5%. That test runs one of these benchmarks over and over again to see if the computer throttles itself down when it's under heavy load. And it looks like you might see a little degradation in gaming performance over a longer session, especially with a game that's really taxing that processor. I was hoping it would do a little better on that test because it does, of course, have a cooling fan that you're going to hear uh, while you're putting that computer under load there. Generally at idle, it's pretty quiet. But if you start doing anything with it, you'll hear the fan kick on. It draws in air from the bottom here and blows it out the back. Uh, so you'll want to keep the bottom clear. Don't put it on fabric or carpet or anything like that. Uh, and you will see a little bit of performance degradation when you are stressing out that processor. And we also took a look at the Jellyfish video test file that we grabbed from their website. 140 megabits per second, HEVC 10-bit at 4K. It was able to successfully decode that video with no drop frames, so HEVC video performance was great on here, so that was good. Uh, we also booted up Ubuntu, the latest version, to see how well it handles Linux. No problems there either. Audio, video, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, everything that we look for to work was working here on the first boot without a lot of aggravation. Seems to be running as nicely on Linux as it does on Windows, so you have that option available to you as well. Always good to see full Linux compatibility out of the box, and that's what we got here as well. So there's not much to complain about here. There are a couple of things like the uh, throttling and the screen brightness, but I think for the price point, you're going to get a decent laptop here that can do a lot more than other $320 laptops that are out there. I love having a 1080p IPS display, even if it is a bit dim. I like that they got a backlit keyboard snuck in on this as well. And of course, the graphics performance out of the Ryzen chip is really good. And it's a shame we don't see more of these laptops out there. Uh, they're not often heavily promoted. You have to hunt around to find one. I am always on the lookout for these, so let me know if you see any others out there that we should get in uh, down in the comments because we don't look at enough of these AMD devices on the channel and they are really the hidden gems of the low-cost computer market right now. So hopefully we can get a few more in for us to take a look at. That is going to do it for this review. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mike Talbert, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.